Hello, and welcome back to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something for your regular installment of climate news, climate science, and ways that you can make a difference. Today's episode is about America's favorite pastime. Baseball? Driving. Here in the U.S., we drive close to 3 trillion miles per year. And while we're starting to see the first electric cars mass-marketed to American drivers, pretty much everyone still burns gasoline to get where they need to go. Gasoline, of course, is made from oil, which along with coal and natural gas are the fossil fuels. Now, most of the energy stored in these fuels has been buried underground since before dinosaurs walked the Earth. And when we dig it up and burn it, we release carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas that traps heat. Scientists agree that massive amounts of greenhouse gas pollution from our burning fossil fuels is responsible for the dangerous warming now happening on our planet's surface. A fifth of U.S. greenhouse gas pollution comes out of our tailpipes. For all the driving we do, though, we haven't been very efficient about it. A whopping 60% of the fuel a typical car engine uses gets wasted as heat, and much of the rest gets wasted in other inefficiencies. Only about 20% of the gas you burn, or put another way, only 20% of the money you pay for gas actually gets used to move the car. Wait, what? So basically, my car actually does burn money. I always suspect it. And for each gallon of gas you use, that's about 20 pounds of greenhouse gas pollution that goes into the air. Last year, however, we got some good news from the Obama administration for both the climate and your wallet. The president announced that cars manufactured for sale in the U.S. will soon be almost twice as efficient. And by 2025, the average car owner will save thousands of dollars in gas money over the life of the car. The internal combustion engine any engine that burns gas, is a very old technology and the principles behind it haven't really changed much since it was invented. Applesauce! So the breezer my big six is stuck on is really a hay burner. The latest electric models like the Nissan Leaf and the Chevy Volt have motors that are vastly more efficient and they accelerate quicker too. Of course here in the US, the electricity you use to charge still usually produces greenhouse gas pollution, but an electric car's efficiency will be comparable to getting 100 miles per gallon. We can report that the new regulations, which go into effect for 2017 to 2025 model years, will increase average fuel economy of cars and light trucks to a whopping 54.5 miles per gallon. This standard is a huge improvement. The U.S. fleet had hovered at 27.5 miles per gallon since 1985, until Obama took office. The Detroit automakers and United Auto Workers are both in support of a more efficient fleet. So your next car might just be helping to save our climate and save you some cash in the process. When the new fuel economy standards take full effect in 2025, they will have reduced annual greenhouse gas pollution from our motor vehicles significantly, but they won't eliminate it. And most of us aren't buying a new electric or plug-in hybrid model this instant. If you wanna make cars even cleaner right now, you don't have to wait. Don't just sit there, do something. Can we count on you? Every episode, you're gonna get two action, wait, but, I really love to drive, like really like driving a lot. Like, what am I supposed to do? This action better not suck. Fuel efficiency drops above 60 miles per hour. For every five miles per hour above 60 you drive, you're probably paying an additional 30 to 90 cents per gallon. Obeying the speed limit is safer, cheaper, more environmentally friendly, and also legal. Hey, what did I just say? or drive smarter. Don't idle your car. If you're not in traffic and you're in a situation where you need to stop for more than 10 seconds, with any modern car, it's more fuel efficient to turn it off and start it up again. Modern car engines also don't need to warm up for more than a minute or two, even on the coldest days before being driven. Okay, no idling. That's easy, done. Secondly, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Environmental Protection Agency are still accepting comments for the new proposed standards. They want to hear from the public and now is your chance. A simple web form will let you voice your opinion about America's plan to finally get more fuel efficient cars and start lowering our greenhouse gas pollution. So click the link below and let them know what you think. Dear EPA and NHTSA, the new rules rock soars. Now just hook me up with an electric flying car and we's cool. Seriously, 
It's 2012. In other words, don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Do something. And that's the end of today's episode. Don't forget to tune in next time to hear the latest and learn something about climate. The president has called for an end to the subsidies taxpayers are continuing to pay to the fossil fuel industry. We'll be talking about what that means. As always, you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, YouTube, or on the web at do somethingaboutclimate.com. So watch again and tell your friends.